today I'm going to play with a Sinan Shark Tank beauty products. I'm excited. This right here, this is by Dermovia. Lace your face face mask. You have chin straps that kind of lifts this entire face mask on your face. So no more slipping and sliding, but beautiful face mask with patented technology. This right here is their clarifying mulberry leaf. It's detoxifying and minimizing pores face mask. Retailing for $15. It is expensive for a single use, but it's not a single use. You can use it twice. Let's try it out. This straight up is like lingerie for your face. That's nice. And then the chin straps, oh, these are soaking wet. Ooh, okay. I feel like a lot of this is going to be on my face, which is exactly what I want from a face mask, but I look really scary, but mysterious. A little bit of sexy, you know what I mean? <laughs> this is straight up underwear for your face. Like the one thing is it's really pulling right here. So the mask is not actually sitting on my nose, around my nose, it's just kind of like laying on top. You can kind of see it right here. Yeah. It says, keep this on your face for 30 minutes and then take it off and just kind of pat the serum onto your skin. Ooh, that's so nice. And the serum actually feels quite nice, obviously very wet but it's not sticky. A lot of times the face masks, the serum feels so sticky and so uncomfortable, but this is very lightweight and it feels really nice, but it is quite messy down the neck cause it is so liquidy. But I feel like before you even use this, you can kind of squeeze a lot of the axis back into the pouch and then reuse it the second time. But the best part is the ear loops and the chin straps. That's the best part about this mask. The mask provided such a beautiful glow to my face. I wouldn't say it did anything to my pores, but my face does feel really soft, like really supple. And I rub the rest of the serum into my hands and they feel so soft right now. Oh, that's really nice. I'm giving that face mask a solid A, maybe even like a good A plus. I really enjoyed that. All right, so this next product is really cool. This is by Spatty. I'm not sure if that's the actual name brand, but this is Spatty. Get to the bottom of it. Get every last drop. It's basically super tiny little spatulas that you go into your jars, your makeup products, like foundation or like even lip gloss or whatever else. And you can't get the last drop of it. You go in there, you scrape everything off. It comes in two different sizes. You have the little mini one and then a bigger one, which is really cool. So this right here retails for $11.99 with crazy good reviews. Let's try it out with some foundation. I wanna see how it will scrape the edges, like the edges of the bottle. I'm thinking even for like skincare products, your moisturizer, if you're that type of person that doesn't wanna get your fingers into your like jars of moisturizer, whatever else, I think this would be really good to even have around. You just wipe it clean and you're good to go. That's why I'm actually really excited about this. Let's see. Oh, look at that, yeah. It's scraping. Oh, it's actually doing a good job. It does get quite dirty, but it's actually scraping really nice. It has really nice edges to it. Look at that, it's actually quite good. It has this nice straight edge. Wow, it's actually a lot better than I expected. They are saying this is dishwasher safe. So whenever you're done with it, you can just pop it in your dishwasher after if you use it on your makeup or like your food products. Obviously I'd have it for different purposes. Have a setup in the kitchen, have a set in my makeup area, but I like that. It's actually really cool. The one thing is it's not gonna fit a lot of holes. I would say this right here fit perfectly with the foundation, but I would say maybe in like lip glosses, it might not fit because lip glosses, they're a lot smaller. Let's find a lip gloss. Yeah, no. Now I'm stuck. Oh, no, I got it. It's a really tiny hole, so I feel like you'd have to use this and you can get product out. There's no scraper on the bottom of this. I don't think they even use it for that purpose, but at least you can get that part in there. I feel like you can even use it for lipsticks when it's to the very bottom. So many great uses for this product right here. I give this a solid A+. Let's move on to the next product. This is the Quick Flick, the Perfect Wings. And this retails for a whopping $30, but they're saying this is supposed to save you time. There's a lot more product in here than the conventional eyeliners. So I'm really excited because it has really good reviews and we picked up the Modest 
10 millimeter and they have other sizes you can choose from. I have tested something like this before, like a couple, maybe a couple years ago and they're all over Amazon. There's different brands. There's a lot cheaper versions of this, but they were not good and they did not save time. I still had to clean up using concealer or even just a little bit of micellar water to really clean the edges. So I'm hoping this is going to give me better results. And it comes with two pens. I'm not sure why. I'm just trying to see right here. Okay, there's a left and a right. So for the right, you have the stamp right here and this is a 10 mil millimeter one. And then on the other side, you have the actual pen where you finish drawing your eyeliner. I think this is what I didn't like about the other ones. It was the same thing. It's kind of like a really big felt tip marker and it, you just couldn't be as precise with it. And then a lot of them bled really bad, but they are saying this is waterproof. It's heat and sweat resistant or something like that, but it has a lot of really bold claims. Let's draw it on and see how well we can do. <laughs> They're a little uneven. <laughs> so now I'm gonna go back into the marker and just finish drawing this off. It's really stiff. You can kind of fix it, but not really. Ugh, I did a horrible job. Yeah, now see, I have to redo that because that looks horrible. I'm gonna fix this eye right here, fill it in, see how it looks. It's really thick, this 10 millimeter one. And I do have to go back over this little area right here to fill it in, which is totally fine. But I feel like I would still wanna clean this up. But let's do the right eye again. And I kinda wanna try to follow the same contour, but this is the hard part. You have to like kind of stamp at the same time, which is kinda not good, but that's fine. Nope. Fix it again. I went a little too much. You see what I mean? It's just, you have to literally keep playing with it to get that right shape. All right, let's try this again. Okay, that's better. But you see how uneven that is? You have to be like really precise of where you stamp it. It still looks uneven. Hmm. I'm gonna take some a cotton swab and my cellar water. Yeah, see, it still looks super uneven. This one is thick, this one is thin. So the eyeliner is on, but I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I am not the biggest fan of this. First of all, you need two of these products to make this work. You need a left and you need a right eye, which I understand, it's understandable. But again, these are big. Eyeliner is usually super tiny and really, really small. It doesn't take up too much space, but if you're traveling, you need to take two of these if you want the perfect wing eyeliner. Second of all, when applying it, you have to be really precise. The only way you could be really precise with this, if you have some kind of shield underneath your eye that already creates the shape for you and you just stamp it, you're good to go. That way I think would work really well. But if you're just eyeballing it, you guys saw me struggling. The right eye kept going really high and on the left eye, I feel like I did a really good job, but it was really thick. So I had to fix it using a little Q-tip with micellar water, which is totally fine. It's just an extra step if you really, really wanna get it precise and perfect and you can get that perfect winged look. The other thing I'm gonna complain about is the finish. It's not a matte finish, which I don't like. This right here is still a shiny and you can see it's kind of catching the light. I don't like that. But again, it's a personal preference. Positives. It's really black. It's really opaque. And when you layer, it doesn't skip and it doesn't create any bald patching, which is a huge plus in my book. The next positive, it's a both positive and a negative for me, is the Sharpie. It's a really big Sharpie style marker, which you can be precise with it because the tip is really nice and stiff, but it does kind of bleed a little bit. So you do have to be really cautious with how much you're pressing and how you're drawing to create that perfect inner corner or however thick or how thin you want. So you can be precise with it, but a lot of product does come out, which is a negative in my book. There is positives and negatives to this. I'm not sure what is patented on here because there are so many different products just like this on Amazon for far less of a price. Yeah, I'm gonna give this a good C plus just because it did miss a lot of the marks for me. It didn't make it easier. It wasn't faster. I still had to clean up a lot and redo the eyeliner over and over again, but it's a C plus. I mean, if you're already really well versed in liquid eyeliners, I feel like you could just skip this altogether. But I do think just creating that wing shape, helping you create that outline, I think this is good for to practice with. All in all, I don't see myself reaching or reaching for this instead of my regular liquid eyeliner formulas that I already really enjoy. Doing the one and only check-in for the eyeliner. It's probably been maybe four, five hours since I first applied it. It looks 
horrible. Like, it transferred into the crease and it just, I feel like it never set. It's just not a good eyeliner. At least this batch that I got, I'm pretty disappointed with it. This one is really cool and it seems really cool. This is by Nerd Wax. This is their original glasses wax. Stop slippy specks and sunnies. I think this is really cool. Retails for $9.99. Usually what happens in the summertime and if I wear makeup and when I'm wearing sunglasses, they tend to slip and just the makeup starts moving around. But I'm really hoping this is going to work. So I really wanted to test it on my full face of makeup. So this is what it looks like. You open it and it just looks like a clear lip balm. And what they say is all you do is you wipe off glasses to remove any surface oils, apply directly to the nose pads of your glasses and lay it on thick. If used too much, you can always wipe it off later and the Nerd Wax will wear off naturally over time. Okay, that's cool. So they say lay it on thick. Ooh, it's like really hard. I thought it was gonna be a little softer than that. I'm making sure to get on the sides as well. For some reason, I thought this was going to be literally like a lip balm texture, but it's actually quite hard, which I think is good. I don't know if that was thick enough, but let's put these on. Okay, and they're actually quite on there. That's nice. I'm gonna take it off and see what the what the nose looks like and there's some makeup on there. Mm, okay, I actually can't feel any residue on my nose, but I feel like there is a little bit of a mark left from the glasses itself. It doesn't look like any makeup transferred on here of those, what, 20 seconds that I kept this on my face? Not even. But I like that it's not slipping and sliding. I feel like the real test would be how many hours I could wear this and seeing if I would have to fix fix the glasses on my nose like over and over again. But as of right now, like moving my head, it feels quite comfortable on there. They are slipping a tiny little bit, but I feel like without it, it would slip a lot more. Hmm, okay, I quite like this. This is nice. I do love how tiny it is, so keeping it in the car. I wonder if it would melt if it gets really hot, so I'm not sure. It doesn't really say anything on the box that it's going to melt after a certain amount of heat or temperature. And it is made with all natural ingredients. As of right now, I'm giving this a solid A. I like that the functionality is there. It doesn't feel sticky. It's not leaving the residue on your nose, at least not on mine. It just feels nice and comfortable. One thing, like I said, keep it in your purse, but you can just keep it in your glass pouch as well. Really comfortable. Doesn't add anything extra. Just, yeah, that's nice. All right, let's move on to the next product. So this next one is called Tangle Pets. Kids will love to brush. The fun new brush that detangles any type of hair, ages three plus. And Lori, she's the one that partnered with them. <laughs> Thought this was so cute. Glides easily through wet or dry hair. I think this is really fun. The thing is, it's expensive though. Okay, it's not too bad. I thought it was over $30. It's $22.95. So it's definitely pricey for a hairbrush. Let's open this up. <laughs> so, this is what it looks like. Really obnoxious, really cute. And then you have the little hairbrush right here. This just looks like a very typical hairbrush with the little, the little beads that are attached around the comb. But the thing is this right here, I wouldn't say it's like the best detangling brush. I just think it's more for the purpose of being cute and simple. But yeah, it's, I wouldn't say this is the best detangling brush, even just brushing my hair through versus something like this. It's a lot softer and it's a lot more gentle on the hair. It doesn't feel like my hair is getting pulled. I just think kids won't feel as intimidated with brushing their hair because like, oh, can I have my unicorn little hairbrush or whatever other characters they like. Yeah, it's, just, it's adorable. Like I can't fault it. If I had a little girl, I would totally get her something like this. And you can remove the brush. That's what it looks like. It's really cheap hairbrush. And then they could just use this as a toy if they wanted that. And the reason why you can remove the brush is to wash the toy, which is really nice. I wouldn't say the brush is made with high quality bristles or anything like that. It's just really cheap. And yeah, I, I give it a good solid B plus because the quality is not the best. All right, so last but not least, we have these makeup junkie bags. There's so many things that they sell, but what makes these unique is they're flat and they open right in the center. So I wanna compare it to the Lay & Go, which is my personal favorite because it's literally, you open it up 
and it just lays flat and everything is still inside of the makeup bag, but it's everything just exposed and open to you. And it does have these little sides that your makeup doesn't spill out. The one thing about this is every, the inside is lined with this waterproof material. So if you do spill anything, really easy cleanup. And another thing is, I think why people enjoy this is all the fun prints and finishes, like the texture of the prints. So if you're really into something fun and colorful, I think this is definitely up your alley. All right, let's go with the medium. I wanna see how much stuff I can fit in here before it gets really uncomfortable and I can't close it. All right, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I'm not seeing why it's so different than a regular makeup bag because you still have to take everything out. I think the fascination is because it is flat, so it kind of keeps that shape, but is it better than any other makeup bag in the market? No, because this is expensive. The mini is $32, the small is 36, the medium is 42, and then the large, is 48. So you are paying quite a bit of money for just a makeup bag. I'm gonna end it there. I think we found some great products and then some not great products. Please share some of your favorite Shark Tank product finds that are phenomenal. But for now you guys, thank you for watching, spending time with me, and I'll see the next one very soon. Bye.